Holly, the new book from Stephen King is out now. It's been out for about a week as of this recording. People on the internet have opinions. I have opinions. I want to talk about it. Let's do it now. Hello, book people. I'm P.T. Hilton. If you are new here, I talk about fantasy books. I talk about horror, crime fiction, and occasionally even comic books. If that sounds cool to you, or if you're the kind of person who likes to talk about books almost as much as you like to read them, you are in the right place. Welcome. So let's talk about Holly by Stephen King. The premise of this book is uh, private investigator Holly Gibney, who was uh, introduced in the Bill Hodges series and came back in The Outsider and in Let It Bleed. Now she's back with her own novel. And this time she has a case to find a uh, missing young woman. She was hired by the young woman's mom. And uh, the case brings her up against some incredibly creepy uh, old people, an old, uh, old married couple in their 80s. So before we get deeper into this, let's talk about uh, t- how the reactions have been a little bit polarizing online to this so far. Some people have loved it. Some people have said it's just too political. Now, the tenor of a lot of these negative reviews has kind of been, I read books to escape the world. I don't want something in my book that reminds me of the real world and takes me out of the story. Which is a mindset that I honestly don't totally understand. I mean, when you're reading books, there's always going to be some connection to the the world, right? There's always going to be something that's some sort of commentary, either purposely by the author or not purposefully but even if you're reading you know a fantasy book set in an imaginary world there's going to be uh, representations of of you know class and uh, the justice system and different things that are probably uh, commentaries or at least can there's some parallels to our current world now all that being said the reason for this controversy is this story takes place in 2021 Uh, There was a pandemic, it was a very polarizing political time, and our main character, Holly Gibney, has strong feelings about uh, politics and about the pandemic, and she not only talks about it a lot, but she thinks about it a lot. And if you're the kind of person that is bothered by that kind of content, it's definitely going to bother you a lot here, because it's not just one or two mentions, it's probably every conversation for the first two-thirds of the book has some sort of, um, at least little reference to... The things that were going on in the world in 2021. Now, that being said, me personally, I liked it. I thought it was cool. Um, the reason being, I love specificity in my fiction. Um, you know, I don't want her to just, the, the, the protagonist just be drinking a soda. I don't want her to be drinking a classic Coke, you know, with the condensation on the outside. I want it as specific as possible. And all these references, um, while I could totally see the argument that it's a little bit over the top in this case, it really put it, the story at a very specific time and place in history. And um, even though it's only a couple of years ago, in some ways it feels like a historical novel because of the things that were going on in the world that are very different than our world now. And it kind of took me back to that time. So again, your mileage may vary. Maybe you don't want to be taken back to that time. Certainly understandable. So I'm going to give a spoiler-free review here. And what that means to me is that I'm not going to reveal anything further than what is on the, the bush the book jacket on the synopsis on the side. So um, from that, we know that there's this uh, couple in their 80s who are uh, up to some nefarious activity. You find that out like two pages into the novel too. We know that Holly's trying to find a missing young woman. We don't necessarily know why she was she was missing or what happened with that. So that's about as far as I'm going to go with it. But I will say Stephen King tweeted, I saw a tweet from him just uh, maybe a week before the book's release, talking about how this is a very gruesome book. And I would agree with that. There's a lot of a lot of um, ugly stuff in here without getting specific into what exactly is going on. I kind of want to tell you, but I'm going to keep it spoiler free, so I will not. But what's interesting to me is despite all this kind of ugly stuff that's going on, it's actually like in some ways a very optimistic novel. Um, Holly and a lot of the minor characters except for the fact that Holly's mom just died at the beginning, which is sad. Um, other than that, it's like they all have like really wildly successful things going on in their lives. They're all just like, they're all just killing it. Everybody, all the heroes and, and uh, side characters um, are just doing great. Almost odd how, how successful everyone is being. Um, a lot of this kind of side characters that we met in the Bill Hodges series um, are back and they're, they're all just doing great, guys. 
don't worry about that whatsoever. A thing that I always appreciate about Stephen King novels is how quickly he's able to suck me into his worlds. A lot of times with books, I can expect the first 10, 20 pages, I'm going to be kind of kind of pushing through it, trying to get into the story. And that's just really not the case here. Like I was sucked in maybe two pages in, I was like just fully invested. He's talking about a minor character in the, in kind of the prologue. He's talking about another side character that's just only has a few sentences or maybe a couple of paragraphs about her. And it's like, it's pretty, it's an amazing superpower Stephen King has to just give you a few sentences on somebody and you're like, you're in with them. And strangely enough, that even extends a little bit to the, uh, our bad guys, the, the old married couple who's doing these terrible and super horrific things. But they are like very strongly in love. They have banter uh, amongst each other. And it's just kind of cute to see this couple in their 80s who are so uh, clearly in love and, and just um, such a tightly knit pair that sometimes I would forget, oh yeah, I'm not supposed to like these people. They're doing terrible things. And I would kind of like them for a minute until we got back to what they're doing. And then I would once again be appalled. I will also say there's quite a few themes in this book that uh, Stephen King has explored quite a bit and is kind of returning to. There is a subplot about a younger person being mentored by an older older writer, um, which, you know, is kind of kind of something we saw in um, in Hearts at Atlantis, even though it wasn't, I don't think, I don't believe the older character was a writer in that, but he was, he was kind of mentoring the younger character around what makes a great story and reading and things like that. Um, so that feels like well-worn territory for King. There's probably other examples I'm not thinking of. Um, also, again, I'm not going to get into what the bad guys are up to, but what they're up to and their reason for it is something that was explored in another Stephen King book in the last uh, 10 or 15 years, let's just say. The other thing that, that Stephen King has done lately, I've seen it a few times in his recent novels, and I love it every time, is when Stephen King makes a reference to other Stephen King stuff. And I don't mean that in a dark tower, every world is connected um, kind of way that he's, that he's referencing something that's happening in the real world, but it's when his characters make pop culture references to Stephen King stuff. So for example, there's some point in the, the story where a, uh, a woman is talking about how her daughter had been the prom queen. And she was like, luckily no one poured any pig's blood on her head. I, I love the fact that Stephen King has embraced his impact on popular culture. And that happens a few times throughout this, throughout this novel. And scene change, there was a slight technical difficulty when I was recording the end before, apparently. So I'm just going to wrap it up in a slightly different location with slightly different uh, wardrobe and background. Look, I really enjoy all of Stephen King's crime stuff. I know not everyone does, but I liked the Bill Hodges series. I liked a lot of the other stuff he's done, Billy Summers, etc. And I think Holly is my favorite of his crime novels. Uh, I'm going to give it four and a half stars. I really enjoyed it. And as long as uh, you don't mind some of that uh, 2021 era stuff that I mentioned before and you like crime novels, I think you're going to enjoy it as well. Guys, I've really enjoyed this modern era of Stephen King. It seems like he's having a lot of fun. Every book that he puts out I find enjoyable and interesting. Uh, it's probably my second favorite era of Stephen King after kind of the really early stuff, the the carry to, say, Pet Cemetery area is probably my number one favorite. But another era I'm really interested in is the early 2000s, what I kind of call Stephen King's Mad Scientist era. I made a video about some of the interesting and kind of crazy experiments he did during that time. So um, check that out. I'll link it below and put a little card above. Thanks so much for watching, guys. We'll talk to you next time.